As a new parent, one of the most stressful things can be trying to figure out and choose a daycare that is quality for your child while you have to go back to work. We all wanna stay with our babies full time, but some for some of us, that's just not an option. In this video, I'm gonna give you 10 evidence-based tips to look for when you are vetting potential childcare solutions for your children. If you are new here, hi, my name is Jenny. I am a teacher, mom, doctoral student, and expecting baby number two in July. And in this video, I wanna talk all about different ways that I vet daycares and childcare providers to ensure that I'm getting the absolute optimum care for my infant based on research and evidence-based practices. I spent a lot of time reading through several different textbooks on what is best practices as far as infants go. So my tips are all gonna be based around those best practices for childcare and things that you can look for when you are out looking for childcare. My first tip is to ask about the turnover rates. One of the most important things that you can look for with an infant is continuity of care. What that means is, is you want the same people caring for your child as much as possible from day to day. So that means, let's say Sally is caring for your child and three other infants that day. You're hoping that Sally is caring for your child Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday as well. Another way that some daycares will do this is they'll have a childcare provider and they will be in charge of, let's say, four children in the room. So you wanna be looking for those places that have childcare providers that will be with your child for a de decent amount of time. Concerning factors for me would be if they have a high turnover rate or if they have part-time employees and your child is kind of changing hands often, that'd be something that I would be concerned with as far as childcare goes. My second tip for finding a quality daycare is looking for a small caregiver to baby ratio. Certainly no more than four, but I would definitely ask what is the ratio for caregiver to baby. Four, I believe in a lot of states is the state requirement. Three is even better. So maybe ask how many infants each caregiver is providing for. That's something important to consider, especially as far as going on to that continuity of care piece. Tip number three is to ask them how they care for the infants. What I mean by this is you're hoping that they follow a self-demand schedule. A self-demand schedule is basically each individual child has their own schedule. It's not we all take a nap and we're all infants at 1 p.m. and then we all have a bottle at 1.45 p.m. and then we all have playtime at 2 o'clock p.m. Your baby night might not be on that schedule and that's okay. What you're looking for is a childcare provider or facility that is willing to go off of your baby's cues depending on the day. So your baby might wanna eat at one or they might wanna continue sleeping at one. You want a childcare facility if possible that actually has a self-demand schedule. So baby's schedule is based on what their individual needs are and not based around a clock. The next piece is an obvious one, which is health and safety. Look around the facility, take a look at it. Are there broken toys? Are you seeing any broken toys anywhere? You're gonna wanna see constant supervision. You're gonna wanna see evidence of safe sleep practices, making sure babies are alone on their backs and without any other items in the crib except for maybe a pacifier. You're gonna wanna ask about sanitizing toys, how they do that, especially if toys are shared among children. And finally, one thing that's really good too is to see that the food and diaper area are separated. Something else you can actually just observe and my next tip as far as an infant room is to see how they respond to crying or if they're following that self-demand schedule you would expect to see caregivers providing immediate assistance to infants that are crying or near immediate assistance I would also ask them about how they approach people who are new to the infant. For example, when you get to a little bit older in your infant's age, they may be less comfortable with new caregivers and having a caregiver facility that is respectful of that child's apprehension about new people is something super important. Obviously you can't avoid it forever, but handing a screaming baby to a stranger does not make that baby feel any more secure. My sixth tip is also an observation-based tip. I would look and see if they are talking to or responding to infants. This is really important for their social emotional well-being and also their development. For example, if a an eight month old has a toy and is babbling about the toy, maybe you would see a caregiver ask, is that an interesting toy? Is that a yellow truck that you're playing with? So just seeing those caregivers actually interact with the children that are in that infant room is super important. And I would definitely wanna see that they actually are having that interaction with each child. Another piece I would suggest as a piece of advice for learning 
learning is to make sure that learning is unique to each child. Yes, they have a curriculum. Yes, they have plans for each week, but every child is different and every child is on a different place as far as where they are cognitively. So I would expect to see some differentiation there as far as what your child is doing versus what another child is doing because every single child is different. There are lots of evidence-based materials that you could look around to see if they have within the room. And so I wanted to mention a couple of them that are, again, evidence-based for excellent learning tools within an infant room. Mirrors are an excellent thing to see. So if you see mirrors, that's a great sign, especially if they're around areas that babies can interact with. Mobiles are also really good too, especially for babies who are learning to reach. Having those mobiles is a great option. Too. When babies are working on that palmer grasp, having things like rattles and stuffies are really good to see. I know stuffies can be a little bit challenging as far as health and safety goes, so maybe more along the rattles or foam blocks category, you might see some of those uh, toys as well. For when they're working on that pincer grip, you might see some knob puzzles or some stacking rings. And finally, the other thing that you might see as materials are contrast colors or circles or patterns or things for young infants to be able to look at with their eyes that are really engaging. So those are just a couple of materials that I'd be looking for in the, in the infant classroom if I'm looking at a daycare. Something else I would of course be looking for as a teacher, this one's near and dear to my heart, is a time for singing or reading books, especially reading books. Books are so important important to that language development and there's just so much data that shows that reading is just so key even from an early age. So I would highly recommend asking them if they have a story time even for the infants or if they read books to the infants and if they also have a singing time too. That would be a really good sign if they have those story times or singing times. So I wanted to finish this video with things that I would, if I saw, would be negative for me in terms of a childcare facility. The first thing that would be really negative for me is if it's really, really silent or really, really loud. Neither of those are good. You should have kind of a, a middle ground as far as noise goes within the infant classroom. There should not be pure silence, but there also shouldn't be absolute chaotic noise going on either. Something else that I look for a lot, and this is a big one, is restricting infant movement. It is so important that infants are able to actually explore the floor, whether outside or inside, and so if I see a lot of bouncers or jumpers or swings, things like that, that is a major red flag for me because it means that babies are being put there for probably longer than they need to be and not experiencing floor time as much as they should. So for me, I would, if I saw those in there, I would ask how long babies are in there because they, they really should be spending all of their time or most of their time on the floor. The last thing that I would say is a negative that I would be looking for is super stimulation. So babies that babies get overstimulated pretty easily. So you want to be very careful about the amount of stimulation you're giving them. If you have a TV going plus music playing plus somebody talking to you, that's too many things for an infant to digest. So those are just a couple of the really red flag pieces that I'd be looking for. Once you're into the actual eating solids stage as well, that would definitely be a question I would ask too, is what sort of snacks are provided. If they're providing snacks, I would really wanna know what sort of things are being fed to the infants. I hope some of this was helpful to you in learning a little bit more about what makes a quality daycare situation. I know that daycare is super expensive and it's so hard to find one that you feel you can trust as far as childcare goes for your baby because your baby is, it's your baby. You'd prefer to stay with them, but we don't always have that option. So I wanted to just provide a video that showed you a little bit more information about evidence-based practices on what is a quality childcare facility for an infant. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I'm gonna be doing all sorts of new content about newborns, infants, as well as cognitive development for 15 to 24 month olds based on the age of my older daughter, Alice. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.